Welcome, I'm Steve Lavoniak over here at New Tech Machinery. Today we're gonna to be demonstrating on how to do a changeover on the brand new board and batten, the BBQ 750. These are the tools you're gonna to need for installing the board and batten. You got a 3H drive ratchet, foot long 3H drive extension, 3H drive 4 inch extension. You got a 9 16 half inch 3 8 drive, and a 9 16 wrench, box end open end, a half inch, and also a 3 8 5 30 second Allen wrench. In this video, you will see me using this 3 8 drive low torque driver to tighten all the fasteners. This specific driver is configured to deliver 16 foot pounds of torque. If you do not have a low torque driver, be sure to set the torque of all the 5 16 bolts to 16 foot pounds. A torque wrench is the best method to set this torque. The damage that could be caused by improper torquing is pulling the threads out of the gold bar, resulting in you're gonna to have to replace the gold bar, cross-threading the bolts. Lock washer and washer will embed into the aluminum, which will then eventually come loose and your tooling will be loose. By following these torque specs, you will ensure that the tooling is properly secured. And at that point, we'll bring in our torque wrench. We have an old fashioned one with the bar scale. At this point, you'd use a your foot long extension with the half inch socket. At that point, we'll attach it and bring it to a read 16 to 17 foot pounds of torque, then we know we're properly secured. To get this process started, open up your manual. It'll do step-by-step -step procedures, what I will be showing you today. At this point, let's get started. Okay, before we take the covers off, there's a couple of safety things we gotta take care of first so we stay safe is um, you're probably already in the auto mode. As soon as you take the covers off, it's gonna put us in a maintenance mode, which means the machine will not run in auto. So you're gonna be in manual mode in case you gotta run something out. But at that point, before we take the covers off, let's power the machine down so we can get started. By the way, this board and batten video was done on a SSQ2 2023 with a unique controller. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and start taking the covers off with the quick disconnect latches for easy access to the inside of the machine. We got our covers off. Now it's time to start taking out your existing tooling that's in the machine. So let's get started using our impact drive with a half inch socket. All right, now it's time we start taking each individual rail section out of the machine. First, take off your first bolt. The second one, before you loosen up your last bolt on the station, you wanna hold your rail so it doesn't fall down through the machine. And then you just turn it at an angle, slide it out, and put it on a card on a table so that it doesn't get damaged. As you take the rollers out of the machine, we gotta store them properly so they don't get damaged. And the proper way of storing them is laying them on the sides like this so all your forming stations are not sitting on the surface. That's not good because you'll start damaging your rollers as you transport them through the shop. So the proper way is laying them on the side like that so everything's away from the surface. You want to repeat the process as you continue going down the machine one rail at a time. Then you want to hold the roller on the second bolt so it doesn't fall. Because if so, it'll do that. These rails are a little bit heavy. Then at that point, I usually grab it just like this, roll it up. As you grab the two rollers so you don't pinch your fingers, lift up out of the machine. Now that we're done with the right side, let's go ahead and move over to the left side and just repeat the process one rail at a time. As usual, on the last one, hold your station when you take out the last bolt so it doesn't tilt on you. At this point, just pick it up, rotate it, and lift it out of the machine. Now at this point, you just wanna repeat the process all the way down the left side. Just lift up, turn at an angle, and up and out. Now at this point that you got all your roll stations out, one final step is to take out your shear dies, your entry and your exit shear dies. I just switched over to a four inch extension with a half inch to take the bolts out of the shear dies. Okay, at this point, we gotta take off our exit dies. In order to do that process, we gotta take off our box assembly to get to the dies safely. At this point, this bolt right here, we're gonna have to take off the two jam nuts. Once you take that out, you got your three bolts right here. 
Take those out and this box assembly will come out. Now at this point, since we got the shear guard off, we'll go ahead and start taking off the outside dies. Make sure you hold the dies so they don't fall out. Just pull out and pull down and just repeat the process on the left side. Now that the shear dies are out, we gotta take off the shear guard. In order to properly do that, we gotta use a 3 8 wrench to loosen up the bolt so we can slide the cover off so we can get to the number one shear blade. At that point, once they're loose, just slide up and slide out. With the shear guard off, you'll notice a warning label. The warning label is if you operate this machine without the shear guard, severe damage will happen. So in that case, you always wanna work in front of the shear or behind the shear, never through the shear. At this point, we gotta take off the number one shear blade. The reason is because the Born Batten has its own number one shear blade. So any profile you are taking out, you have to take out the number one shear blade. And how you do that is just a 9 16 socket and take out these two bolts. And then you wanna make sure you grab onto the side just so it doesn't fall. Once we've taken out the number one shear blade, this concludes taking everything out of the machine for this profile and let's get ready to start installing the board and batten. The next step is we gotta move the R1 gold bar and the L1 gold bar to the inboard position and this is how we do it. Okay, now we just gotta loosen up the four bolts on each slider block. At this point, once you're all four bolts are loose on your slider blocks, slide it all the way up to your stop, like that. I usually just give it a little slight pressure to hold it up against there and tighten the bolt. And just repeat the process. Now that we're done with the gold bar number one on the right side, we're gonna move over to the left side and move the L1 gold bar to the inboard position, also known as the B position. Now on the left side, you see your A and B position. In order to do this, we just loosen up our two bolts on each Acme shaft here, and we'll slide it to the B position. Once it's loose, just grab the bar, slide it all the way in, hold it to give it slight pressure, and then just tighten up the bolts. Now that we're done moving the gold bars L1 and R1 into the inboard position, we got one more final step to do before we install the board and batten, and that is removing the R1 and R2 guide rod on the right side. Now we gotta locate the bolt underneath the compression clip, which is a 5 16 and just use your impact to take them out. The next one's a little tight fit for the impact, so I'm just gonna use a half inch wrench and just loosen up the bolt. Then you just continue your way down on the R1 guide rod, which is four bolts for the first guide rod. At this point, your guide rod is loose. Now you just slide it out through the frame, like so. Okay, now we got our one rail out. Now we're gonna concentrate on our two rail, which is only three bolts and just repeat the process. At this point on your last bolt, just repeat the process, just lift out and slide it out through the rails. Now that we got everything set up in the machine to accept the board and batten, now it's time to find all your right side tooling and start installing it. Now this time, let's locate our R1-1 rail. Just slide it in, find your dash and your one number to the gold bar, line that up, grab your bolts. At this point, just to get them started, just install your last bolt, grab it in the center, push back to the outside, tight and tight. Okay, now let's locate our R2-2 rail. Now install an R2. Rail, just find your dash two with the two on the gold bar and go ahead and just repeat the process installing your bolts. Repeating the process of pulling back to the outside. 
And now let's locate our R3-3 rail. R3, as you keep following the process, find the dash and the number on the gold bar, install your bolts, push in, and tight. Now let's locate our R4-4 rail. Okay, R4. Line it up, install your bolts, push out to the outside and tight. Now let's locate our R5-6 rail. Bring in. And once again, pull to the outside and lock. Now let's locate our R6-7 rail. Repeating the process and tight. Okay, now we're ready to install our last rail, R7-9. Little tricky, but not too difficult. And this is how we do it. Bring it in at an angle, angle it down like a 40 degrees. Bring this cone roller underneath the keel rail like that, and then push back so you're lined up. Put your bolts in and just repeat the process of pulling back and locking it down. Tight and tight. Now that we're done installing R7-9, that concludes the right side. So let's move on to the left side. All right, now that we're ready for the left side, we're just gonna repeat the process as finding your L1-1 rail. Just slide it in, line up with the number on the gold bar, install your bolts, and just repeat the process of pulling it towards the outside and locking it down. Next is find your L2-2 rail. Slide in L2-2 rail. Once again, line it up with the dash two number on the bar, install your bolts and lock down. Next, your L3-4 rail. Now we're gonna install L3-4. Line it up, install your bolts, pull to the outside and lock down. Next is L4-5 rail. Once again, find your number five on the gold bar, line up the side hole and install your bolts. And once again, push to the outside and lock down. Next is your L5-6. Find your number six on the gold bar, line it up, install your bolts. And repeat the process of pulling to the outside, which is critical, and lock down. And then L6-8. When installing L6-8, you want to be careful because that is your punch assembly, which has your punch knives that cuts through the material. So make sure you rotate them when you install them. So when you grab it, you don't get cut. And the proper way of doing this is the way this is set up here. Grab it, bring it through your rails, find your eight, and just repeat the process with your bolts. Once again, push to the outside and lock down. And then finally, L7-9. And same as all the other processes, find your nine on the gold bar, match it up through the side hole and install your bolts. Push back, lock down. The next step is we gotta disengage our bead rollers. The process of that is loosening up this bolt. Okay, to loosen this, loosen that on a centric shaft, rotate it up till you're at its highest point. Snug your bolt up, lock it down, you're ready to go. Repeat the process on the one next to it, loosen the bolt, rotate your centric till it's to the highest point, lock your bolt, and you're ready to go. The next step is we gotta power up the unique controller so we can start running panels. So the first step is, is take out your lockout tag out and power the system up. Now that the unique controller is booted up, you're gonna see a flashing sign saying maintenance mode, indicating that your covers are off. So which means if you're in auto mode, it will not work. We're gonna to have to switch over to the manual mode in order to use the controllers to start running material through the machine. The next step is setting up our entry guide to our marking plates on the board and batten. So you'll need is a three foot, about a three foot piece of coil that you're gonna be running for your first job. And then I'll show you on how to set up your entry guide. 
So the first step is on your right side entry guide, you wanna loosen up your handle, slide your entry guide over so you line up your notch with your notch on your marking plate off of your R1 rail. Once you line that up, go ahead and lock your, your lever down. Once your right side's done, you wanna loosen up your left side entry guide, slide it out of the way. Install your three foot piece of coil. At this point, bring your material in, push your left entry guide up against the material, wiggle a little bit to make sure you're square. Don't push too tight. Go ahead and lock down your lever. At that point, roll it back and forth to make sure you're good. Once you're good, then we gotta crank the left side tool in to line up your notch to your notch, and this is how we do it. So what you wanna do is make sure you engage. If it doesn't engage, keep turning it till it locks in. Then you wanna turn it clockwise to move the tool into the outside so it lines up with your notch. Once you get there, go ahead and release it. Bring your roll pin, put it through there so no one can't bump it. Now it's time to start running material. So on the unique controller, hit start, and we're gonna slowly jog it. All right, at this point, when you come up to the bead roller, you wanna make sure that the, the board part does not hit your beads. At this instance, it will, so what we're gonna do is loosen up the bolts on the clamp blocks and move it to the center so we have our clearance. All I'm gonna do is just slide them out of the way because we're not gonna use the beads on the board and batten. Just snug it down so it doesn't vibrate over. Now we're, we're ready to continue to go through the shear. All right, now we're ready to jog it through the shear very slowly. As you see on the female side, it does flare up a little bit, but as it comes out, it will lay down. At this point, if you hit your start feed and material ain't coming out, that means you're out past your last drive roller. So grab your panel, slide it out, shut the power off to the machine. Okay, at this point, you got your panel out. Congratulations on your successful changeover to the new board and batten profile. Stay tuned for the next video on how to adjust for uphill, downhill, and setting up the shear dies. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.